On board, the skippers eat this. Packets of dehydrated freeze-dried food, such as duck breasts with apples, tomato risotto. It looks like this, as Neutrogena's Guillermo Altadil demonstrates. Open the bag, pour into a container, heat some water, wait for it to boil, pour the water over the food, mix well, let it rest, and finally, enjoy. To get an idea of what they eat, members of the race management and media team took part in a tasting session eating this exact same food. On the menu, minced beef with potatoes and vegetables. Here are the critical observations of the jury, marked out of 10. With so many positive scores, the food must be good. And now back to the race. The conditions remained harsh yesterday. On board Hugo Boss, co-skipper Ryan Braymare has been working on the rig. One thing is sure, you must have a strong stomach. Meanwhile, on Gaes, Gerard Marin tries to take his coffee on the terrace, but it's not so easy. Last night, the fleet of Amoco 60s rounded the southeastern tip of the ice box. Saffron passed it first, just before midnight, followed by Hugo Boss at 1.45 UTC. Earlier yesterday afternoon, Gaius, sailed by the mixed crew of Anna Corbea and Gerard Marin, overtook Team Neutrogena to move into third place. But along the ice skate, the two boats were separated by less than a mile. Sailing into lighter conditions today, speeds have also decreased, with the boats typically making 12 to 13 knots. As a result, the fleece is compressed, with Hugo Boss now just 24 miles behind Safran. Free of the ice box, the boats are heading out into the open Atlantic Ocean, and for the first time they've been able to fly spinnakers. But because they're sailing downwind, the race is about to get much more tactical again. Already, Team Neutrogena has split from the fleet, heading slightly further north, as the boats today must negotiate the light winds of a high-pressure ridge. How successfully they tackle this next hurdle of the course will have a long-term bearing on the outcome, so stay tuned! <laughs>